Your enemies are plotting against your life, your destiny, and your future. That's why they keep watching you and monitoring you. But I'm going to make this clear. Absolutely clear. There is nobody in this world that can steal your destiny. There is nobody in this world that can swap out and take your destiny, brothers and sisters. Amen. Come on, let me get an amen. Somebody put down in the comment section below, you can't have my life. They can't, brothers and sisters. Amen. What God got for you is only for you. Now, today I'm going to expose to you why the enemy will try, notice I said try, to steal your destiny or swap destinies, all right? My first point is this. Your enemies are suffering from identity crisis. Come on now, let me get amen. And what they want to do is they want to create identity theft over your life, meaning this. They see you're confident in your abilities. They love the gifts that God put in you. Amen. So they want to steal it from you. Let's go to John 10, 10. It says this. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. You see that? The devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. So what you have to understand about what the enemy is doing is they're performing witchcraft over your life. All right? This is witchcraft. Destiny swapping, destiny stealing, all of these things are witchcraft. It's from the enemy. Okay? Now, my next point. Some people say, well, Crystal Life Coach, why is the enemy doing this? Well, jealousy, envy, all right, and coveting. The enemy is jealous of you. They're envious of you, okay? Some of them, they see a spouse that you have, your girlfriend, boyfriend, and they want that. They want your life. They want to walk in your shoes. This is what the enemy will do. Coveting. They're looking at the material things. Amen. They're looking at that new home that God just got you. They're looking at the new car that God just got you. And they're coveting. That's why Exodus 20 tell us in the commandments, you shouldn't covet thy neighbor's house, thy neighbor's wife. Nothing that's your neighbor's. But they're not connected to the most high. So this is in their spirit. The majority of people that you see on social media, they all covet, brothers and sisters. Amen. That's why they look and watch. They like to compare themselves to me and you. Now, when I tell you that when you're a chosen one from God, that nobody can steal your destiny or swap out your destiny, I mean that. And I'm going to prove that to you by scripture. But let me go to my next point. The second reason the enemy will want to do this is peace. Oh, this is powerful. You as a chosen vessel of God, you have peace. Amen. <clears throat> These people, the majority of them, have a reprobate mind. Oh, man, I'm going to say it again. They're losing their minds, brothers and sisters. They don't have peace. So some of them want your peace, your joy, because they're not happy. These people are very miserable. Okay. So they want to steal your joy and steal your peace. They want to live in your energy. They are energy vampires, brothers and sisters. This is real. The next one is power. Yeah. The enemy wants your power in the spiritual realm. They want your ranking in the spiritual realm. They see how powerful you are. A lot of these people who want to, quote unquote, swap destinies, steal your destiny, they tried, they went against you at one point in time and they failed. Amen. Come on, let me get amen. They fought against you. 
thousands of them fought against you, 10,000 of them fought against you. However, the number was, and they saw how powerful you were, and they saw the angels that you were protected by in the spiritual realm. These people want that same protection. They want that same power that you have. You are highly ranked in the spiritual realm, brothers and sisters. You are a powerful being from the Most High God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they also want that relationship that you have with the Most High God, okay? They envy this relationship. They are jealous of it. Why? Because they are disconnected. Somebody put down in the comment section below, my enemies are disconnected from God, okay? Now, the next one is... They sold their souls, all right? They don't have a soul, all right? These soulless people, okay, they want your soul, all right? They're trying to get their souls back, okay? Um, and they pretty much turn their back on the Most High, right? And they considered walking away from the Most High, and now they see that you are in perfect peace. You got your soul. You got your joy. You got your love. You didn't sell out like them. Somebody put down in the comment section below, my enemy sold out. They all sold their souls. They all sold out just like Judas, all right? And they are looking at you as a vessel to actually get their souls back. They want your soul and they want to reverse the roles and have you not have a soul, okay? This is all the enemy wants. This is what, this is what I make this absolutely clear. The enemy want you to walk in their shoes and they want to walk in your shoes, okay? You are gifted. Amen. You're talented, right? You're special, brothers and sisters. I tell you this. The enemy is trying all of these things. They try to gaslight you, make it seem like you don't got these talents, these gifts, and like nothing about you is special. Brothers and sisters, in the dark and secret, they're secretly looking in the mirror trying to mimic you. They're obsessed with you. They want your life. They know how special you are. They just don't want to tell you that. But somebody put down in the comment section below, you ain't got to tell me. Come on now. Come on now. Let me get amen. They don't have to tell you because you already know who you are. You know that you're special and they just don't want you to know, amen, that they're thinking about you and that they're obsessed with you. These people are narcissistic demons, brothers and sisters. Okay. And let's see here. Now I'm gonna go to scripture. Let's go to Isaiah 54, 17. <clears throat> and it says this, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper in every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment. Thou shall condemn this destiny swapping, right? This um, identity theft that the enemy is trying to place over your life. This is a weapon. OK, and I want you to know you are protected now. Now I'm bringing out scripture, brothers and sisters, to show you that all of this stuff that the enemy is trying to do, the witchcraft, it's all going to backfire. It's not going to work. And no matter how bad the enemy want to place themselves in your shoes, in your destiny, it will never work. Why? Because you're a chosen one from God. Now, if you are not chosen from God, if you are an enemy, right, the enemies can do this. They can perform that witchcraft over their own. Right. And they can swap out destinies with them, but they can't do it to a chosen one of God. Understand, and I'm going to prove that to you why. Let's go to uh, Romans 8.28. This is why they can't. Let's go to Romans 8.28. I'm going to show you why. This is why, brothers and sisters. This is proof. This is Romans 8.28. It says this. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. See, it was all, listen, this was all predestinated. Let me make this clear. God, he foreknew you before you came out the womb. You were a winner before you came out the womb, okay? The enemy is a loser, okay? When they do these kind of things. They're trying to put fear in your mind, fear in your heart, and fear in your soul. They want you to fear a man being brought over to the dark side. No. God told you right here it was predestined for you to win. Okay? And it says this. It says, and we all know that all things work together for the good that love God to them who are called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. So this means that everything is predestined. Everything that God has put out in the world is predestined, okay? It's made for you to win, okay? There's no way that the devil can change it. Let me get amen.
There's no way that the enemy can swap out and take away what God has already predestined. All right. So don't listen to this madness from the enemy talking about destiny swap. You're not swapping out your destinies with me and my brothers and sisters because God already predestined us to win from the womb and you were predestined to lose from the womb. Let me get amen. Second Timothy 1 7, it says this, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. What the enemy's trying to do, right, with these kind of messages, what the enemy's trying to do with this witchcraft is they're trying to put fear in you, brothers and sisters, and we don't have no fear. Amen. We ain't never scared. Come on, let me get amen. Listen, then I'm going to go here. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 6.14. Amen. 2 Corinthians 6.14 says this. It says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion have light with darkness. Brothers and sisters, be separate, separate yourselves. OK, somebody put down in the comment section below. I won't let the enemy get close to me. They can't get close to you. Separate yourself. All praises to the most high. The witchcraft has backfired.